how fast you need to go uh, on my phone that shows the how fast that, that I'm going. So I see a good solid pattern. Our 30th anniversary day. This is today. Mm. I'm doing four miles, three miles an hour, four miles an hour. What we're doing is, oh, let's go, let's go. Why are you like you're crazy? Hey, welcome back to the channel. We are over at the farm and we're gonna to spray today. We're gonna to spray corn with nitrogen. Uh, we're gonna be using this Femco Industry four nozzle sprayer. It's electric uh, and we're not really gonna go into the sprayer a great amount. We're gonna go into the process of spraying and things you have to think about while spraying, but we're not gonna just like dive into this particular sprayer that much. However, all of this information will, is pretty much universal across all sprayers. So I will leave a link in the description section of the video for this sprayer. So if you are interested in it, you can look it up. Uh, it's been a good sprayer for me. But again, this is not really about the sprayer specifically, but just about spraying. So when I was thinking about buying the uh, sprayer, we, I started researching different models. And it was really important that I had one that had a long hose. So you don't always have to have the sprayers open in the back. You can collapse these down and then run the hose to the front of the tractor. And you can use the sprayer uh, while you're driving along. For a good example, if I'm gonna be spraying a, a, a weed killer mix, I can drive along with a tractor while I'm sitting in the seat and just spray along the fence line while I'm going along so I don't have to try to carry 40 gallons of fluid around. It makes it very uh, user friendly. So having a nice long hose will also give you the ability to come up to, let's say, say you have some fruit trees, you can park the tractor in the middle of the fruit trees and go around and spray. So a long hose is nice. You don't want it too long, but this is very manageable. So one of the other things I looked at was how far the sprayer will spray. And again, I'm gonna spray this out across here. This is just a nitrogen mix, so it's nothing that's gonna be bad for the grass. Actually, the grass is gonna love it. So here we go. You can really reach out there and get a long way. Got some adjustment here. So we're gonna have some really cool grass right here. I'm gonna have to mow like this area like 50 times and only once over here. But that's pretty much all I'm gonna talk about on the nozzle. So you can adjust this nozzle to a spray. So for example, uh, Tanya may want me to run down a front of the flower garden and you know just give her uh, all of her flowers a little nitrogen bath. Uh, you can adjust it in the spray. Now I'm running nitrogen in this with a red dye so you can actually see where you've already sprayed. And that's a, just a, a, makes it easier so you don't first overspray an area and to you know just make sure you don't miss an area. Hey, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank High C Footwear and Outdoor Clothing for sponsoring today's video. High C makes an ever-growing line of clothing and footwear to meet your outdoor needs. We'll leave a link in the description of this video below. And because you are our viewers, High C is offered a 20% discount code using code TONY20. We wear it, it's good stuff. So let's talk about the sprayers a little bit. So each spray nozzle has a specific pattern and uh, they have specific flow rates, but you're gonna assume that the, the nozzles that come on your sprayer are the correct ones. So we'll go with that assumption on, on the beginning. We're going to make sure that the sprayer bar is the right distance off the ground. And the reason you wanna do that is as the sprayers, the two sprayers come down, they spray, they spray a pattern like this. Well, you wanna make sure that those two patterns from this nozzle to this nozzle come down and meet in the middle without crossing or if you've got it too low to the ground, they won't touch. So you want the, the nozzles to, to edges of their spray field to actually touch. So that is the first part of getting your, your, your sprayer set up so that you know that you're, you're spraying correctly. So the next thing you need to think of is these sprayers can spray a certain amount of volume. And obviously, again, you're gonna have the right nozzles for your sprayer when you buy it in this application. You get into big farming sprayers, you're gonna have different nozzles for different applications. These are pretty much, you get what you get. 
and you can change them out, but you get what you get. The next thing you gotta take into consideration is the speed. So if you, you need to know, your, your manual will tell you how fast you need to go to get a specific application rate based upon the PSI that you have and how fast you're going. Your manual will give you a, a chart and it'll tell you if you're running say 40 PSI through your, through your nozzles and that you're running three, three miles an hour, it tells you how much product you're putting down per acre. And that's always gonna be your, your, your measurement is how much you're putting down per acre. So the next question I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get is, well, how fast am I going? How do I know how fast I'm going? Well, you can use the good old judgment system, but that's probably not as accurate as uh, you would need to be doing this. What I've done is I've downloaded a little app uh, on my phone that shows the, how fast that, that I'm going. And these phones are super accurate nowadays. They can tell you exactly how fast you're going. So you can type in speedometer in your app, your, your wait, your app app? I guess that's how they do it. So if you type in speedometer in your app app to find the app, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so I don't want to continue to stand, you know, continually look at the phone all the time while I'm trying to spray it. That's not a good idea. What I've done to compensate for that is I ran up and down the yard uh, using my phone app to figure out if my hydrostatic pedal is pushed all the way down and then my cruise control is, cruise, is on and I move the throttle backwards and forwards, I know how fast I'm going at what RPM. And what that does for me is allow me to meter the flow of the application properly. Those are some big words for me. Now we have a basic understanding of how to put down a certain amount of product per acre. So as you're putting different types of chemicals down, be aware that each different type of chemical has a different rate of application. You may need to put down one gallon per acre for one product. You may need to put five gallons down per acre for another product. Just be aware of that. So I wanna talk about some serious stuff now. We've, we've played around here and we've uh, enjoyed ourselves, you know, learning about this, but there's some serious things you need to think about when you're spraying specific chemicals. So when you're spraying insecticides and say herbicides, you're gonna to wanna to wear a respirator and some goggles. And you're also gonna be, we wanna wear it, be aware of the wind direction. There's certain, you know, le levels of wind that you don't wanna spray. Like if it's over five miles an hour, don't, don't spray. You also wanna be uh, very cognizant of where you're spraying and the drift pattern, because you can spray here and there's a small drift pattern that goes over and it kills all of mom's flowers. That's bad, I'm just saying. I'm not saying I know that firsthand, but it can be really bad. Uh, the, I'll say the last thing is, is be, be aware of your surrounding as far as people and, and pets like Gizmo here. Today, we're just spraying nitrogen and water mix. It's harmless, uh, we're, we're, we don't have to worry about it. But the days that we're gonna spray, say maybe we're gonna spray some uh, herbicides or some insecticides, Gizmo's gonna have to stay home that day. So we talked about all that. Let's get to spraying. You ready to go work, buddy? Got some really green grass right there. So I see a good solid pattern. So you need to look at your, your manual and your, uh, your valve setup to control your pressure. Uh, it's pretty easy, again, like once you learn how to set it up, it's not that big a deal. You know how fast to go and, and where to set the knobs to get a specific application rate for a specific speed. You can see here where we tried to spray uh, two days ago and it was just too muddy. I was just trying to push too fast and too hard and end up probably mucking those corn up. I may have to replant that. So I got this last row here to do on this little spot and then I got the others. It's dry enough today, it's hadn't rained in three days so I think we're pretty good. So all I have to do now is turn my little electric switch on and take the brakes off, start spraying. Again, I've got a red dye. So I can see it like glistening off of the, the grass and stuff. All I have to do is just keep it between the rows now. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not marring up like I did the other day. It was bad. You can, you can see right here uh, where I buried. I mean, I literally almost got the tractor stuck right here. So I'm coming to the end of my row. Turn my sprayer off. Just let it drip right there. I can look back, I can see a pretty, pretty good flow right there. Absolutely. So 
I sprayed the little pine tree with just a little bit of nitrogen the other day and it's perked up a lot. I mean, just, it got happy. It's like crack for plants. Just a fry in. So this is all I know about planting corn and spraying corn. And in about two weeks, I'll tell you if I did anything close to right. I'm gonna turn my valves off here. So we've still got quite a bit of solution. That we'll put that on the uh, put that on the yard. We put it on your garden over. We put it on the other garden. It'll be really good. Hey, listen, I appreciate you watching our channel. Uh, we are really trying to grow and, and gain in subscribers. We're getting close to, uh, I think we can hit 55,000 subscribers probably by the end of the month. If, if everybody gets on board, it helps. So if you haven't subscribed, it doesn't cost anything. Uh, hit the thumbs up button and the subscribe button, and it really helps us out. Listen, I appreciate what you do. God bless and have a great day. So today is actually our 30th anniversary day. This is today. And she's gonna come around here and talk smack, but I'm gonna correct her. We, I said, let's go to Hawaii. Let's go on all these trips. Let's do something. And she goes, no, I don't wanna deal with all of the COVID restrictions. Let's just stay home this year. And next year we'll go somewhere else. Yeah. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> and I still like it after 30 years. <laughs> now, that's amazing right there. I wanna take you out. Show you the time of your life I want to figure out what it takes to give you everything you desire I'm doing four miles, three miles an hour, four miles an hour. What we're doing is mo, let's go, let's go. Why are you like you're crazy? Come on, let's go, Gizmo. Let's go. We got to do five miles an hour, buddy. We got to do five. That's hard work right there. That will be the end of my physical training for today. Glad I've been doing those extra Pilates.